Hey there! A long, long time ago, but I can still remember, I reviewed a Jinhao 159. And the Jinhao 159, in my mind, I had a hair in my mouth. The Jinhao 159 was, in my mind, a very interesting pen, made of metal, and it is pretty much, like pretty much millimeter for millimeter, a Mont Blanc 149 in size, same shape, same size, except made of metal and not precious resin. Now. That pen's been around for a long time, a long time, because I reviewed this early on. This was a, a pen I obtained really early on in my whole serious interest in fountain pens. Now, relevant stuff, uh, Jin Hao has released a new version of that pen called the X159. And it's fancy because it has an X in the name. And this is that pen. Now, it's interesting for two reasons. One, it's now made of resin, uh, might well be precious right and two it has a bigger nib than the original this is a number eight nib the original had a number six nib given that people are currently going berserk over number eight nibs i think this was a very smart move and i've even seen one manufacturer of pens all the way in ireland guess three times who it is who actually got these nibs to experiment with them for pens he makes so in other words very interesting because Really, in my mind, the number eight nibs available now are Bok, so the, the Bok 380 nibs. If you think about it, there are other companies that make, uh, used to make number eight nibs, like say Yovo, but as far as I know, Yovo no longer produces them, or there are companies who make bigger nibs in-house. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, uh, I think uh, Santini does that, but also, uh, for example, Magna Carta has interesting uh, stainless steel number eight nibs. Most number eight nibs are gold and therefore quite expensive. So I find it very interesting that there now is a very inexpensive alternative for people who would like to try a number eight nib, a bigger nib, and see what that is like. I've, I hope you'll forgive me this length, lengthy introduction. I always get the comment that I ramble. I try to be really to the point, but I do think this warranted a little bit of exposition, as we say. Now, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I will do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Jinhao X159 comes in this plastic bag, um, which is just that, a plastic bag. I kind of like it because I can recycle this, I'll be done with it. I don't have a box to store, I don't have anything. I know that people's opinions vary. I love this. That's all I need. I just wanted a pen, not a box. Uh, I've already talked quite a bit about this uh, in, in the, the, the first part of this video, so I'm just going to cover the parts now, okay? And I'll show you that number eight nib, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you next to a number six nib, and then you can see that it's really bigger. Unfortunately, for the record, because people are going to ask, I don't have a 159, so I can't do a comparison, okay? On top, the finial. It's black, just like the rest of the pen. We have this nice resin material. Oh, I didn't show you this, did I? Pilot Metropolitan. See that? It's a pretty big pen, the 159, and now the X159. Nice material, resin uh, clip. I feel like I could bend this clip out of shape. I uh, won't try it now, but yeah, I could bend it out of shape, pretty sure. We have a center band that says Jin Hao. Looks like it's some sort of laser engraving or something. Um, X159. I'll come back to that center band. We have a barrel that tapers down. This looks like a blind cap, but it's nothing. It's just the end of the, uh, the barrel, rounded off nicely. And then you have, let me see. I should do it the other way around. One, two, three turns. And the cap is under turns. That's a lot of turns, but you know, it's also not, it's not that terrible. Plus, you can do that quickly like that. We have the nib, it's bigger. Uh, it says Jinhao, it has this sort of chariot, um, I'm going to call a chariot, that, that is probably a type of Chinese chariot that has a name that I'm not aware of, but someone is going to put that in the comments, I already know, please do, thank you. And it says Jinhao, um, it would be really funny by the way if that card is called Jinhao, and that's the, but I'm, but I'm, if I remember correctly, Hao means good, so I don't think it means 
that, or it's called that. Anyway, it's marked F for fine. Um, I'm assuming it could stand for all sorts of things, but I'm guessing this is fine. Uh, and here we have the plastic feed. Now I happen to have here a Duchessa uh, with a number six nib. And as you can see, the Jinhao does have a larger nib. It is number eight. Um, I was unable at this point, but that's because I had it inked up. I didn't want to fiddle with it too much to remove nib and feed, but I'll promise you I'll try it a bit harder and I can probably post a picture on Instagram of the dismantled nib and feed so you can see that it's really bigger than a standard number six nib. Uh, it mainly looks stocky to me, like has pretty widely flat out shoulders, which in my mind looks quite good. I think it's really quite nice. Okay, this pen is fed by a converter. It's one of those, it says Jinhao, it's one of those sort of, I call it Lamy type because it has that flat turning knob and when I say that people get irate all over the world. Listen, Lamy did this first. Okay, so that's why I call it a Lamy type converter. I'm not saying anything else. I'm just saying it looks a lot like what Lamy did first. Okay, I have a nice little metal ring there. Um, good mallet, metal, and that's pretty much it. Um, tolerances, I mean, here is a rubber O-ring uh, to, I'm assuming, keep the barrel in place. Uh, you can also get that out. Does it really matter? Not really, because you just screw this in place give it that final twist, and it will not accidentally unscrew because of that O-ring. Um, what I do notice is that that O-ring here and there already seems to look a little bit worn. I would not be surprised if, because it has this, this friction all the time, at some point it snaps and you need to put on another O-ring. What I have not tried, but what I am curious about, so I'm doing this live because that's how I roll, um, would this section stay in place without the o-ring? Answer, yes it does. Bit of a good twist. Yeah, that's actually pretty tight. So, the o-ring is nice, not absolutely required. Um, you could of course argue that this o-ring might also be there to convert the pen to an eyedropper fill pen. Okay, I'm not going to fiddle with this and waste more of your time. Bear in mind though, I, I, I come back to this later too, but I think the barrel is solid. I should really shine a flashlight in there because there's that metal ring. I think it's in principle solid, but there is metal there. So I would probably not use this as an eyedropper filled pen. Okay, let's see how the pen writes. Oh, and for the record, uh, it does post pretty securely and because it's all resin, I kind of like that because even though it's very long, it doesn't get top heavy. And because it's so light because of the resin, I actually find this adds a nice touch. Very, I find it very comfortable that way. Okay, writing. Jin Hao, X159. Uh, this is the fine nib, and the ink is the Edelstein. It was an ink of the year, uh, and I'm completely am amarine. Is that it? I'm kind of blanking on the name now and I do apologize, but I think it's that. Okay, writing. I am writing right now, quite, the Quiet Fox. Not quiet, but quite. The Quiet Fox jumped over the semi-apparent dog. Um, I'm writing without any pressure, and as you can see, the, the writing is very light. Notice this, which I did with some pressure, and this with no pressure. It's a very dry nib. If I use really without any pressure, so I'm basically letting the pen write on its own, I still wrote quite Fox. You see that almost nothing comes out. Fast writing, I wrote quite again, I don't know why. It works, it's just a little dry. This is no pressure, and then this is some pressure. So it can be a lot wetter, it's just that the nib has a very, very tight slit. And I would be inclined to open it up a little bit, and then I think it would be a very, very nice writer. Okay, line variation. As always, very careful. 
but given how inexpensive the pen is, I'll get to that in the likes and dislikes. I don't mind pushing it a little bit. Looks to me like you can definitely get some line variation out of it. And then finally, for those who enjoy such a thing, the reverse writing, um, it gets very, very thin and fine, but it's already a fine to begin with, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. What I think we should do is talk about likes and dislikes, and that's what I'm going to do next. What do I like and what do I not like about the Jinhao X159? I want to say it's a reinvented classic, which I really like. It's nice that Jin Hao takes a pen that they've made for a long time, because it really must be a decade ago that I reviewed my, my uh, regular 159, and that a company says, you know what, we can improve a bit on this. You know what, number eight nibs are a trend. You know what, resin is kind of nice. You know what, let's do it. Right? Done. You know what? Okay. So I think it's nice. It works well. It looks good. It's simple, black, resin, simple pen, but it looks good. It feels good. Everything is rounded off nicely. There are no sharp edges or corners that I can find. Um, even the threads I find very comfortable, nicely rounded off. And the number eight nib, well, that's just fun. It's something different. It's something that I had not seen on a Chinese pen before. Maybe they exist, but I've just not seen them. For me, this was the first exposure to these new number eight nibs uh, coming out of China. I think it's a lot of fun. It's affordable. Uh, and that, I think, is the biggest selling point of the many of the Jin Hao pens. Not all of them. They make some pens that are a bit more expensive. Uh, but, I mean, I paid $9.76, and that included shipping from China to Canada. I mean, for under $10, a number eight nib, that's unheard of. I don't know of any other brand out there, a uh, pen brand, that would, would get you a number 8 nib for under 10 bucks. Is it a perfect nib? No, it is not. Mine is dry. I did a little bit of probing online, uh, and some people really love their pen, but I've definitely heard some complaints of, yeah, mine is dry too. So I think it is a thing. Fortunately, dryness is relatively easy to fix by spreading the tines a little bit. You have to be a little careful, you don't make anything out of shape, but if you're willing to make a bit of effort, read up on that, maybe watch some videos on that, you can do that yourself with relative ease. So it shouldn't be too too big of an issue. Um, it's a $10 pen. I don't know what you want me to say. It, 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 it writes reasonably well, even without making it wetter. It certainly writes, just not as wetly as I personally would like. Right? The, the, the subjective factor is important. What I will say is, I find some of the details a little bit cheaper looking. Uh, like if you, if, you, if you look at this, this Jin Hao imprint, for example, to me it looks a little on the cheaper side. But as I said, it's a $10 pen. What do you expect? Right? This would not have solid gold trims. It would not have anything. I don't know if anyone has solid gold trims. I mean, it wouldn't have gold plated trims. It just, just doesn't, it's not there, right? That the, the price is not there. And that's okay. I, I know that people are going to ask, can you eyedropper this? Um, I have not tried it because I don't really eyedropper pens. I find it difficult to tell if that metal ring is visible on the inside, but it looks to me like it's not. It looks to me like the barrel may be a solid, solid piece. Um, I haven't done it, so I can't tell you. What I will say is there is metal here on this section that could interact with the ink. I probably would not do it on this pen, but it's a free world. Do as you like. Okay, I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.